108 feet of water. Well, Wainers, welcome back. Today's a beautiful day in Maine, so we figured we'd get out here on the water and film a video for you guys. Today's episode is gonna be a little bit different for a couple of reasons, one of which we've got Kyle here. I flew in all the way from the farthest, uh, farthest destination in the United States. Kyle's from uh, the San Diego area and he flew all the way up to the Northeast. Last time he was here, the fishing was tough to say the least. Not great. What was like our biggest fish that you think we caught? Probably a striped bass. It yeah. was like five, five pounds. pounds. It was not ideal. Last year, Maine was very hot and apparently this year it's also hot too, but the heat being in the play, we figured we'd try out some different fishing styles. Smallmouth are in this lake that we're fishing right now, but what else is in this lake that I want to try to chase after today is lake trout. That's a fish I don't really know too much about, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. We've got uh, big spoons. We got some big Guggen Squad darts tied on as well. We just, we're just gonna try to vertically jig some of these fish. This is something I don't know much about. So it's maybe a giant flop. And if it is a flop, we at least can go up shallow and chase after some some big bronzy, some big smallmouth. We're pulling up this hump right now. We're gonna see if we can at least find some bait. The, the correct terminology for lake trout actually up in Maine is called tobe. T O U T, I'm sorry, T O G U E. Is that what it is? Uh, when I first came up there, I didn't know what a togue was. Everyone was like, oh, you're going after togue? I'm like, is that some sort of weird main species? But it's just a lake trout. And if you guys don't know what lake trout are, stick with it and stay tuned because I have a decent feeling we'll at least find a couple today. They can be tough to catch when, when the heat is on, but we're going to try to attempt to make it happen. So stick with it, stay tuned, and let's go crank. I actually see one right there, maybe. <laughs> that's dude. That's, that's kind of dirty. That is kind of sick. Imagine a striper. A stri I was gonna say a striper would put that thing away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, dude, trolling with this movie kind of fun. All right, I need to not stop if I don't see like an absolute biomass. I keep seeing like a couple fish and being like, yeah, that's it, and it's not it. Yeah. This little drop off right here. I'm gonna have to hop on Google here a little bit how to catch a lake trout. Well, we couldn't catch lake trout. You say it looks pretty saucy. <laughs> we couldn't catch any lake trout, so we figured we'd chase after some swath for a bit. They're much easier fish to catch, you know? I'm all about that easy bite. But in all seriousness, we did try. We gave it We gave it a go. We marked a few, but they were very scattered, and they weren't, like, on the bottom or close to the bottom, which I was hoping that they were. Those were definitely fish that you'd have to troll for, and we don't really have any trolling gear. So we're going to... See if we can mess up a few small jaws real quick. There are some really big small to be caught in here. So we're gonna try that. And then maybe once things get later in the day, we'll go run some humps and pray that those uh, lake trout have moved up. We didn't really see that much bait either. It was just like kind of the, the, the Red Sea. The, no, the Red Sea is good fishing. It was kind of the Dead Sea, yeah. I fished the Red Sea. The Red Sea's full of fish. <laughs> Let's give this a go. Dude, I can see a thousand feet down there. It's wild. God, dude, what's wrong with my Christ. stomach? I had to guess, I said they're probably pretty deep today. So clear. Yeah. It's just hard not to like look instead of fish. Mm -hmm. Looks like I'm not gonna like hit these rocks, but it's just, it's deeper than it seems. Pretty close. Yeah. Another one right there. Mm -hmm. Come on. There's no, there's one on it right there. Watch this. <laughs> So they aren't bad. There's another one up there. Oh my God, dude. Oh my God. There's another one right there. I want to get that net out. Dude, that thing came out from under the dock. That other one, that other one was pretty decent. Another one right here. Wow, this is cool. That's sweet. Right, let me back this up a little bit. Usually too easy. How's it going? Oh, uh, we're just fishing. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. My, I mean, my boat's forty grand too. I wouldn't hit your boat with my boat. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll be careful. 
Thank you. Thank you. Right there. Start that. He's the fishes right there. Oh, there we go. There he's a fucking fish. Come here, Bubby. Nice job. Nice. Well, we couldn't catch Lakers, but you can always count on a few smallmouths to bite. Right. We'll do. Yeah. Well, Kyle, you did it. Nice Fine. job. First smallmouth of the day. We abandoned our trout bite, at least for now. Lake trout is something I need to really hone in on, and the only way to hone in on that is actually attempt it. But this lake is also teeming full of smallmouth, so we, we figured we had to just go up shallow, see if we can find some. They're actually bedding right now, which I I didn't think they would be doing just because it is kind of late in the season. The water temp is pretty hot, and I think a lot of these fish are post-spawn and, and, and spawn, and then maybe some are, are pre-spawn too. I don't really know, but take a look at this bed down there. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that. That right there is a giant bed. And uh, Kyle's fish came off a of bed too. I mean, get that release shot. Nice job. Nice. Put it there. We'll take it. Weird. We're not seeing a whole lot of fish up shallow, but what fish are shallow seem to be locked on bed. So we're going to kind of cruise around a bit, see if we can, uh, I don't know, locate some nice smallmouth, keep us busy until things cool down. And then we might just get back on the trout game. But that fish uh, ate a little rattling ned. In what color? Mud minnow? Mud. A little mud minnow. Rattling ned. Always get some. Like first cast in there, right? <laughs> ridiculous anyway let's keep going it's a good sign hopefully one of many many more another one right there i think so they're like they're more up towards the bank there's actually three here one there's one on that that's a good one look at that one that one's nice there's one a bet it bedded right next to a trash can that's crazy smart yeah another one right there see they use like they like use obvious things to yeah. to bet on. It's so cool. All right, cool. Well, I know where to go now. Thank you. Yeah, I think we might have found him. We just pulled up to the shallows and spooked probably about a three or four pounder. It amazes me that they're still spawning right now. This time last year, we didn't get any super shell. A lot of them were out in like five to 10 feet of water, but we have found quite a few. He's got it. I just had him. We found quite a few that are in like a couple of feet of water. Oh, he's moved, right? He's not on the bed anymore. No, he is. Is he? Is that on him right there on the back side? I can't tell, dude. They are so hard to like. This one's especially hard to tell because he's like very brown. Like he's just straight brown. I need a wacky one. That's what I need. That is not him. What the hell? Is that some male? Where, where did that come from? Look, there's a big one right there. I don't know. There's a female. She, she's... Yep. She might have two, honestly. That happens sometimes. Oh, yeah, she got it. Yep. Got her. Nice one. Oh, that's a big one, dude. That's a really good fish. Oh, my gosh. Wow, that was so sick. We've been following this fish around for a second. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is sick. That is such a nice bass. That's definitely one of my biggest main bass, main bass of the season. Oh my lord, buddy wanted it. So much fun sight fishing like this for big smallmouth. Come here, buddy, buddy, got you. Oh, don't do that. I'm using six pound line right now. This is scary stuff. <whistles> Barely hooked, you know. Nice, look at that one. High threes all day on a little five inch green pumpkin lunker log. God, that's fun. This hasn't even been touched too. There we have it. My first small off of the day. It's a nice start. No lake trout, but we'll take brown bass all day. I think we might be onto something. We're pattering him down. It's way too windy to be out in the main lake right now. So we're taking cover in these coves and we're chasing after these smaller jaws. Thank you, dude. The strategy right now is um, instead of finding fish with our cast, we're looking with our eyes. We're up on top of this deck and we're just scanning this shell flat. There's 
just scattered rocks, some brush, trash in the water. Most of the bottom consists of just like sand and silt, which the smallmouth love to spawn on, but they bed up in really er obvious areas. Like they'll bed up right next to a big boulder or right next to a lay down, making them super easy fish to catch this time of year. This honestly doesn't require a ton of skill, but it is a lot of fun. And especially on a day like today where now it's windy and we can't really focus on the trout bite. Um, you know, it keeps us busy. Cool thing about this too is this uh, whaler, unlike my other boats, has got this nice raised deck. So we have pretty good visual on these fish. Honestly, if we wanted to, we can get on top of the cooler and get really crazy with it. <laughs> Start stacking all the stuff in the boat until we're all the way up here. Kyle is throwing a little rattle and nut. I'm focusing on something a little bit more uh, weightless, that being a wacky worm, five inch long curl log. And green pumpkin, natural. Did you just have one? Did you break off? What happened? Oh. <laughs> oh God. I want to switch to the wacky, honestly. Give it a shot. Yeah. Or uh, big swim bait. <laughs> and get, oh my God, dude. That's got to be a bed. Oh my God. Yeah, he just ate it. That was crazy. Dude, that thing came like five feet off the bed to eat the wacky worm. Oh, it's another nice one. <laughs> Do you see that? Look at that bed. That's like a foot of water up there. I wasn't sure and I made a really terrible cast and he still ate it. Northern smallmouth feel bad for terrible anglers like myself. Oh wow, come here buddy. Woo! Fish number two for me, probably about a two pounder. Fish like a two pound smallmouth fights like a four pound, five pound largey. If you know, you know. A little crusher, he's got a cool black mark on his eye. Ah, interesting fish, thank you. Back you go, Bubba. See you later. Oh. Oh, most ridiculous bed I've seen all day. Where is it? Is it like right, right here. It, he's he bed right on top of a um, right on top of like a, I don't know what the hell is this thing called. It's like a pump, yeah. Wind switch. There's yeah, one. Look at that one right there. Switched. See him? Yeah. That's a good one. There's gonna be a bed right there for sure. Look that clump of There's probably a bed right in this. Dude, that's a good one. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness, bro. That's a nice smallmouth. Just right on the most, just most obvious spot. We are hooked up to another nice one. This one might be bigger than the last one. Yeah, I think it is. It's longer for it's sure. Longer. They just don't quit. There you go. Look at that. That one's definitely bigger. Another nice one. Oh my gosh. The way these fish look like in this lake is just so sick. Every small off has got a different pattern and color. This one's got some nice tiger stripes. Quite close to a three pounder. Gorgeous. Just blind cast that one on a uh, little buoy line. Whew. Thank it. See you later, buddy. Nice one. Oh, real nice one. There we go. Dude, there's just sitting underneath the dock. Yeah. Dude. That's a really good thing. I can fight that thing. Good job. See you, buddy. So aggressive. We're uh, have to switch over a pattern here. We kind of we kind of fell off on our bite. We were up shallow, looking for beds, looking for roamers, cruisers. Couldn't find any more. So then we jumped to more more of a main lake spot, as you can see. The main lake is just over our shoulder. We're fishing these docks. Docks are great because they provide shade. And in a lake that is this clean and clear, any sort of shade is probably going to be taken advantage of by these small mods. We're just throwing little tiny. Uh, neds and big swim baits around these docks and getting a couple fish to come out I don't think this is a great way to catch big fish But there is gonna be a few large smallmouth on some of these areas Especially the bigger stuff that's close to the main lake like big docks like that looking good though. Nice fish. Way to go Kyle Snug. Yeah, I <laughs> thought it was a fish <laughs> Thank you.
Hey yo, hey yo, we in the dog. Hey yo, do you wiener dance? Do you little wiener dance? What you doing? Hey girl, why you look broken? Hi girl, how you doing? You still loving Camp Claw? She says, I don't know, I have not caught any squirrels yet, and John has not caught many big fish. Yes, we still love them. Good morning, wieners. Welcome back to Camp Claw. It is day number three, I believe. Kyle is still with us. You still loving Camp Claw? Still loving it. We did a little something last night. I wish we'd have filmed this, um, but it was super dark and we were just kind of having having fun without the cameras on. We took the took the Can Am for a spin. We we no longer uh, we can no longer take the Razor for um, death missions, um, but we did take the the Can Am out and we did get her a little bit muddy. So that was fun. You enjoy that? I was. Yeah, first was, true time on the can. It was a great time. There was one point where we just sent it into a, I guess you would call it like a small pond, and uh, got a little bit stuck there. But hey, nothing the can can't handle. She just caked in mud. Wow, she looks real nice. Like luckily, there's a, a little nice ATV trail just down the road from here, so we uh, we utilize that a lot. You know, just doing appropriate main things up here in Camp Claw. But that's not why we're filming today's video. The reason why we're filming today's video. It's because we're taking the whaler out on one of my little favorite rivers. I guess it's a big river. It's one of the bigger ones up here in Northern Maine, that being the Penobscot. And we're gonna chase after some stripers using top water baits. I got uh, some floating rip baits, some big spooks, and we're gonna see if we can catch our first river striper. They, uh, they do this weird thing this time of year where they basically start all the way from the Atlantic Ocean and they travel up the river and they get all the way up and they meet the dam and then they just stay there for a couple of months and then they leave. I don't know what they're doing. I don't think they spawn up in the river. Maybe they do. You guys will probably know better than I, but uh, I think they just do it because the water's cooler up there and they're chasing bait. They're chasing menhaden. They're chasing bunker. And the whaler is um, is the perfect boat just for this mission. We got most of the rods rigged up. We're actually gonna bring some smallmouth rods too. I got a seven foot Guggen Green uh, ready to go. We've got some poppers as well. The reason why we're bringing smallmouth rods is because there's also smallmouth in the surf. You can literally catch smallmouth in sea run striper. One of the coolest fishers. And I'm excited to bring you guys along with today's fishing mission. Uh, everything is set. We're kind of late. High tides at 11, so we're gonna fish the outgoing. Stick with it, stay tuned, and let's go crank. Oh yeah, there is definitely a qualified captain here. You gotta love when you just find someone's uh, someone's roller from their trailer just loosely hanging at the dock. Anyway, we're here. We've made it. Welcome back. We're on the river. This is a much more suitable fishery for the old Boston whaler. How are we doing, Captain Kyle? We're doing. We're doing. It's a roller guard for a trailer. Oh, trailer. <laughs> yeah. The mission, the goal for today, is to spank some big stripey boys. Wish us luck. Cool. We out here. I'm gonna throw a spook. I'll throw the jerk bait. A little, little jerk bait, a little scout. Idle up a little bit more. I don't think there's too much water here. I need less water. Trying to clap a Sammy. We all clap a Sam. 90 calories in one Sammy. Really? Yeah. Wow, not healthy for you. What's one serving? Like a drop? A tablespoon. Ooh. Do you like your meat soggy or? Is that meat soggy? It's that wham, wet ass ham. Mmm. Busting? Yeah, I love cold cuts. Cold cuts on the boat. Holy shit, they're there. Look, 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 look. Look at right here, right here. Two big ones. Two big ones. Two big ones. Right. Yeah, oh, actually, school them. School them, dude. School them. Holy shit. Oh my gosh. Oh boy, there they are. They're just not coming up here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yep, those are some big ones too. Those are like a couple. We're like between five and eight. God bless it. Oh my God, those are good ones. Just cruising. Dude, they're like carp. Really? Yeah. All I need right now is a fat striper just to eat the spook that'd be nice it's perfect right now it's yeah. strong outgoing it's glass calm they love this we saw them they're up here i think i need to get on that inside yep 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 
There he is. There he is. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Okay, start fishing, start fishing, start fishing. Oh, he's still on it, he's still on it, he's still on it. I got him. That's a striper. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's go. Nice one, too. It's a good fish. It's a really nice one, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's one of the bigger ones I've caught out of here. Oh my gosh. Let's go. I was being an idiot with the spook and he just crushed me. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a big one. Oh man. For the river, that's a nice fish. Oh buddy, come here, sister. Yes. That relieved all my sorrow and pain. Oh wow. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Oh wow. Look at you. Come here, Bubba. That's, like, that's what we want. That's this. Yeah, it's got shoulders. It's got meat. First strike of the day. And it's a good one. Oh, stop that. There we have it. My first main striper of 2021. Freaking nice one, too. I was burning it in for another cast. He missed it, then ate right by the boat. That's so sick. You can't ask for a better, better eat than that. Hopefully this is the first of many today. He's so fresh. He's even got sea lice on him. Look at that. This guy was just in the ocean and traveled all the way up the river just to be caught. See you later, buddy. Thank you for playing. Come on, buddy. You got this. You got this. There you go. I kicked the gun. I think on that note, I'm gonna put Kyle up with a nice top water as well. A buddy of mine gave me this. He's caught some good striper and mass. A buddy named Sam. Small in size, but it gets some big bites. All right, go catch a giant. We're on him, baby! That was so sick. Literally right there. Yeah. Oh! oh! Sturgeon! <laughs> that was cool. Yeah, I think so. That was so sick. Oh, I was like, whoa, something's happening. Whoa. Whoa, was that a striper that I saw brown? Yeah, that was a striper too. Sorry about the real. Maybe he was going for your top water and he just missed it by like 13 yards. 13 yards. Dude, that was crazy. That was cool. I've never seen that. That's epic. Little guys. Oh, that was sweet. Keep me. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. What'd you think? It's tough. Yeah. You have a way with words. That That is probably the best way to describe today. We did manage to get one, and it was like funny because I wasn't even really trying to catch it. I was like frustrated. I've got this thing going on right now. I'll, I'll get into it later, maybe when we get back to camp. But basically, I'm looking for a trolling motor. I ordered a new boat. I need to stop buying boats. I need to stop buying forerunners. But uh, I got this new boat, and it is most likely going to replace the low. Super excited about this. But anyway, long story short, I thought I ordered a trolling motor a month ago. I guess I didn't. So, like, I got this big trip tomorrow that involves a boat. The trolling motor uh, it just isn't there, so I'm like scrambling on the phone, calling all types of marinas. There's not a single trolling motor to be found in the state of Maine. I don't know what it is, and like I was frustrated. I was ripping the bait fast, and this thing must have felt bad for me because he came up and crushed it. But now we get to do one of my favorite things, and that is to eat some local Maine seafood. There's this joint that um, is just right over there that actually sells some pretty good clam chowder, not the best, and pretty decent uh, lobster and lobster rolls. So we're just gonna go crush some some local fare and we might go back in the water maybe 50 50. we uh we also could do a little bit of freshwater fishing on the way back too but yeah that's that thank you kyle for joining me today that was fun it's been pretty slow hopefully these next few days are are much better yeah we have caught some pretty good small this trip so we can't fully complain but i would like to see some more fish on the whaler and then hopefully some more fish on this new boat which i'm excited to show you guys it's a very different boat i've never owned a boat like this so i'm quite pumped but uh, let's go grab some grub and figure out what the next step is. I got some good news. We may not have caught a lot of fish today, but on the bright side, on the silver lining, we've got the LX470 back. I don't know if I mentioned this in one of the videos, but it was in the shop for a bit. It had some weird battery issues. It was draining. Uh, battery even though nothing was really on I don't know what that was about but she's alive and well and we now have a second vehicle second off-roading overland vehicle up here for Camp Claw so last year we just had the the black rig runner which I honestly still miss the supercharged rig runner but now we've got the the LX and we've got the brand new um, TRD Pro off-road 
or not pro, sorry, TRD off-road, not the pro, the um, amateur, TRD amateur. There's something I wanna show you guys really quickly. I feel like I should have probably filmed this in Texas, but I actually, but I brought it with me to Maine so I can unbox it for you all at home. Um, this has been kind of a work in progress for quite some time. Something I haven't been working on, but someone else, a viewer, has been working on uh, for me. So this is something that I have been waiting for, for months. Honestly, I think it's been like three or four months and it finally came in, completely custom handmade. It's a lure, but not just any ordinary lure, but something that is, uh, this is probably like a one of one. Like no one I don't think has ever done anything like this. And the dude that made it, his Instagram is BC Custom Swimbaits. I'll leave his Instagram link down below. Huge shout out to him for doing this. Did this completely for free, super generous. And when he said that it finally came in, I got stoked, but I waited to open it up on camera. And I kept getting sidetracked because I've got ADHD. I figured I'd use this opportunity to show you guys what, uh... holy moly, it's even... how cool is that? <laughs> Hang on, I gotta, you know what this is, it's a Pokemon, right? Yeah. Yeah, isn't that wild? <laughs> oh, it's rubber. That's wild. Look at this, this is unreal. I gotta zoom in real quick. Oh, you hooker. That is so freaking nuts. For those of you who follow my Instagram and have watched my videos for a while, you know that I'm into Pokemon, especially Pokemon cards. And uh, he created a legit Gyarados lure. It's, dude, it's freaking wild. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven joints, and uh, it's fully functioning. I, I've actually seen some some videos of this swimming. It's not only just a Gyarados, but it's a Shining Gyarados. So it's even cooler. He asked me, do I want a regular Gyarados or Shining? Obvious answer is, is Shining. Like, yeah, he even went the extra mile and put like a silicone tail. Like, there's elements that make this an actual lure. It's not just, I guess, what you'd call like novelty. And I didn't realize this, yet, but his like, his pecs are made of rubber. That's pretty wild. So anyway, huge shout out to BC Baits for this. This is cool. I don't know if he necessarily does projects like this, custom projects, but he does make like a mirror out of like uh, glide baits and swim baits. And this is just one of the more crazier things that he has created for uh, someone like myself. We, we've actually got a pretty big musky trip tomorrow. And <laughs> the funny thing is, is these musky are, at least they can be dumb. So I can't imagine what it would be like to throw this for a muskie. I'd just be afraid to break it. That's yeah. my thing. If you guys do want to see me fish with this, maybe for largemouth, a much tamer species, drop a comment down below and uh, we'll make it happen. But there it is, Shining Gyarados Lure. Finally created. I kind of want to get some more. Gyarados maybe, uh, we could do a Magikarp Lure. I think that'd be pretty dope too. Oh, oh wow. Nice. Docks in the middle of the uh Oh <laughs> Is it floating or yeah, no, no, it's not supposed to be like that. Yeah, there's perks of having a camp out in the middle of nowhere. Is you come home to lots of surprises. I've not been in the back section of the property since last year. And uh Kyle's like, oh nice, the dock is just floating. I'm like, yeah, that's what a dock does. And then I look over to my left and uh yeah, it's really, really floating. I don't know how that happened. It somehow detached from, it's almost like, what the hell? It's kind of weird. It's like, it's like it, somebody pulled this out of the, you see this? Well, like the pipe is just like out of the ground. So this pipe was like dug in. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was in the ground. Buried. It's kind of sus. Mm, I don't weird. know. So I'm pretty sure the dock was right here. Yeah. And it was, it was like posted in the soil. Oh, is that a fish? Really? Oh yeah, that was a fish. Probably, a frog. probably small with a frog. Somehow the post is out of the ground. You guys will have to let me know in the comments like how the hell something like that happens. Um, but right now I've got a floating dock in the middle of the Guggen Lagoon. I'm gonna have to swim out there and grab this dock eventually. Not today, it's too cold. Quite the predicament. I love Camp Claw, I really do. It's just like a new project every single day. There she is, floating out in the middle. Also one of the trees that I I sunk, decided to float up for no reason. That's kind of strange, but we still do have um, some structure still out there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Water looks really clean too. This is probably the cleanest I've ever seen it. Also looks like the water's high. Our creek is still doing good too. Still flowing. Probably gonna have to weed whack this a bit, but but for the most part, Guggen Lagoon is looking like it's in good shape. It just needs a dock. Well, at least we have a dock. It's just, yeah. Anyway, let's go fish and see if we can uh, redeem ourselves today. We do know there's small up in here and I don't feel like we've caught every single fish that are in the pond, so let's uh, soak a line and hope that maybe we can get bit. Ready? 
I'm throwing a top water. Kyle's throwing a lunker log. I don't know why I'm throwing a top water. This is honestly a striper lure, but I figured I'd try it anyway, you know. Go big or go home. It'd be pretty insane to see a small bust on top water in this pond. Like that would be pretty cool. There are brook there are book there are brookies in here too from when we stocked this place in October. We stocked 300. I'd have to guess that literally none of them survived though. Just due to the the fact that um well, you know, they were trying to swim on top of the ice earlier this year. That was pretty sad. Well, the nice thing is, is that the dock's kind of creating some good structure out there. Okay, so the mosquitoes are so freaking malicious out here. We're gonna wrap things up. I've thrown my spook at every single angle of this pond. Uh, it takes about five seconds to fish the Guggen Lagoon, so you kind of get the gist. We were getting eaten alive out here by main, main skeeters. So we'll meet you guys back in camp and uh, close up to this video. No longer log bass, eh? Nope, none. Did you get a bite? No. No. <laughs> he said he did earlier, and I'm like, did you? Did you though? <laughs>